Today I learned that CSS individual transform properties do not work in the way I expected them to. And you know what? I think they can come back to bite you pretty easily as well. So I decided I had to make this brief video about it. It all started when I was migrating my website to Tailwind V4 this morning. Then I stumbled upon this animation that actually looked broken. And when I stumbled upon it, I thought this must have something to do with the automatic migration that Tailwind V4 did. So I started to look everywhere to see where it could come from and I didn't really find anything. And after maybe even 30 minutes of searching, I discovered it was the CSS individual transform properties. This is not something specific to Tailwind or Motion at all. So let's have a quick look at a plain CSS example to see what's going on here. I made this very basic example that has two logos in it. And that's the only thing we're going to look at. On the right, you see the preview. And if we hop over to the CSS, you see that we have a logo one and logo two. And if you don't know about the individual transform properties, what it actually is, is instead of using transform translate Y, we can now use translate directly. This also solves many issues that if you, for example, would have a hover state where you only would change it translate Y, but not a scale that was part of the non hovered version, then you had to repeat that within the transform. Otherwise the hover transform would reset this scale. But now you can simply say scale 1.2 and then it would also apply that scale and only on hover you would have to change the translate and not the scale for example. That's pretty neat. However, if we take a look at logo 1 and logo 2, you see that for logo 1 I added both the transform as well as the translate and for logo 2, which is the right logo, I only added the transform. Now you might already start to see what the problem is here. The problem is if you add both the transform as well as the translate, they will get added up. And that is something to me that blew my mind because I didn't expect it to work this way. Somehow I expected it that only one of the two would get applied. And also if we would copy the translate and add that within logo two, we just get the exact same result. So it doesn't matter which we use here. But the problem here is that transform and translate are added up instead of overriding each other. And again, that's something that I did not expect. And this is also what the problem was with my animation. Because Tailwind has a class translate x and then for example full that would add a translate x of 100%. And in v3 this class would simply create a transform property. But in v4 they changed it to using a translate property. Meaning that until now everything was using the transform property and from v4 onwards everything will be translate or scale, for example. And this brings me to why my animation was broken when combining Tailwind V4 with Motion. And that is because Motion is applying a transform property by default. In this case, the transform is none, which is what Motion does when there is no styling applied. In this case, it will be a translate X that will be zero. So it just removes it. But then if we would scroll down a little bit, you see that we also have our Tailwind class translate minus translate X full that adds the translate. And therefore this element is actually still moved 100% to the left and thus almost out of view. And if we would play this animation and it would go towards the minus 100%, then all of a sudden we have a translate X of minus 100% as well as a translate of minus 100% resulting in the element being off screen for 200%. For me, there is two ways to fix this. The first one is not using Tailwind to set the initial style and do that via motion or actually changing the Tailwind class name by using the transform class name, which is now, well, kind of the old way of doing it within Tailwind because they changed that to using a arbitrary value. Because for that, you're actually going to need to use the square brackets. So you say transform dash square brackets and then scale X, for example. That to me feels a little bit ugly, but unfortunately there doesn't seem to be a solution in Tailwind V4 anymore. Looking at Adam's comment here, where two days ago he said that they're not planning to make this configurable in any way. And even if you're not using Tailwind or Motion, the fact that the individual transform properties work this way can definitely bite you in the future. So that is why I wanted this video to be out there, because to me this behavior feels so weird and I would almost think that it's actually a bug within the browsers, but I couldn't find anything about this being the wrong behavior, but neither I could find anything that this is the right behavior. So again, that's why I wanted this video to be out there. I'm curious to hear if you stumbled upon similar issues already before, or if your mind was just as blown away as mine was just a few hours ago. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.